I only see one, two, two correct answers. So, so, yeah. Yeah, so you sh th these two are correct answers. Right. Well, you didn't want one, but you threw one up, but only just those two. That's correct. Uh, Besides, that's also wrong. Uh, if you type that like 100 minus 125, <laughs> it's going to be a syntax error anyway. <laughs> so, uh, okay, well, uh, that means, uh, well, the, those answers just typed in after I say that really doesn't count. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <clears throat> that means we still need more exercise. So once you start today's code, I, uh, we're going to again load the John Hopkins data set. This take a while, but it's good enough. Okay. Then what is the data frame? Uh, you can actually uh, go with this exercise again. We have a rows, which is indexing before the comma columns indexing after the comma in the square bracket. We can also use other things to the indexing. Uh, let me see. Yeah, how do you pick the first few rows of the data frame called TB? If we just want to look at the first few rows, especially when a very large file, uh, we don't want to look at all things. Yeah, we can use, well, head TB, yeah, that's not correct. Okay, uh, we can actually do this here. Oh, that's indexing, indexing with the actual row name, column name. We can also do tail and head, yeah. And tail for head, tail for a few columns, <clears throat> or you can even specify how many rows you uh, will call, like uh, n equal two will be just about two rows. Okay, <clears throat> so. <coughs> yeah, 970 columns. So, well, if they say Excel, you have to. <laughs> For us, quite a bit to look at all this. <clears throat> so uh, here we again just sele uh, select the column of daily cases and then the do a matrix and then transfer to transpose and then we have the the other values and then add the combined key back as the uh, column name. And then <clears throat> you order to pick the Hamilton County, Tennessee, and we just pick that column. Yeah. And this is uh, again quick review of the Luber date. Convert that uh, Luber date, uh, and then uh, assign it back into the current date, back into the the date column. And when, when data is a column, we can operate on that using a future, uh, future by rows. And then we have this, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so that's a, a quick review of chapter one. And then we are going to, whoops, why is not, we are going to look at the chapter two uh, today. <clears throat> Uh, the chapter two, chapter one, we have the cumulative cases. Uh, oh, sorry. 
And cumulative cases is basically we count how many total cases are changed by day, but it's actually more meaningful uh, to monitor the daily cases. Uh, so but to convert that cumulative case into daily cases, it kind of a, you call it, we call it a data processing or uh, many people also call that a data wrangling. <laughs> I, I guess that's a cowboy, cowboy term. Let's <laughs> try to throw something on the data and wrangle it. <laughs> so, uh, and we need uh, 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 we need to uh, modify. I also need to uh, 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 for the also need to do a simple modification, simple plot. And this is also another key. Basically, I mean, we have we have the data. But do we take the data? But how do we interpret the data? How do we explain? That's a different issue. Uh, I learned uh, to verify the results using an uh, independent approach. So very often when we do computation analysis, you say uh, we got a result A is correct. And if you repeat that process again, most likely you will still get A is correct. <laughs> what if you have a typo somewhere? So it's uh, it will be uh, what I found is at least it's more comforting or more reassuring if you write a separate branch using an independent method to verify that you still got A is correct, and then the the chance of you being correct. Is a bit higher. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you have two independent methods come out, one say A is correct, then the other one says say B is correct, and then uh, you're going to stay very long to work. <laughs> have a very long day to work that day. <laughs> so to try to figure out what's what's going on there. <laughs> so yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, uh, we're still going to use Hamilton County, Tennessee. Why we pick Hamilton County, Tennessee? Because most of you probably are familiar with that. Data. So if you did something wrong, you will say, oh, this doesn't make sense. Uh, since <laughs> you, you, you are more familiar. If you do something, pick, uh, I don't know, uh, some strange county in Seattle or North Dakota. <laughs> we have no idea. Uh, uh, maybe a few of you know, but the, and then when you analyze some of the data, you, you realize you don't know how to interpret it. Right? So for so we pick a familiar example, go it and make sure we understand uh we are we are, we are kind of reassuring we are doing the right thing. So <clears throat> okay. Uh, I mean, there are a few other examples you can also try, but we are going to, I'm going to stick with Hamilton, Tennessee again. So uh, with all that chapter one, we actually can just redo that in this uh, few uh, <clears throat> lines. I read that the data from uh, GitHub, uh, transpose the each county into columns, convert the date uh, into the object, and then uh, use today as a cutoff. And then, sorry, uh, we don't have to pick five files. <laughs> Uh, I uh, at the time I pick uh, you can pick a time window just for the case. Right now, uh, we probably have a longer time window. If the pandemic has been how long? Uh, see, uh, 20, 21, uh, 800 days. <laughs> uh, you could find out actually. <laughs> Today, <laughs> you will find out how many days are there actually. Uh, okay, let's do that. Uh, how do we uh, uh, how do we find out how many days 
had passed since the January 1st, 2020. Uh, will that work? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm also curious whether that work or not. Okay, so today minus MBY. Well, that one. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. It worked 980 days. Uh, gee, much longer than I thought. <laughs> I thought 800 days, but <laughs> of, of approaching a thousand days. Oh, gee. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so, well, uh, well, if it is Excel, you can also how many <laughs> columns I guess <laughs> so I, I, I I'm sure in Excel you also have some way to count that <laughs> yeah you need to figure out a way to count the column uh, all the rows so the rows may be easier to count that the, the columns will be harder because it's going to be A to X, then A, A. <laughs> it also becomes very confusing after that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to pick 900 days. How about that? Whoops, 900 days now. Uh, so, and then uh, we just pick Hamilton County with the dates and future. I see future using that 900 days window. This is why I put the window there because otherwise, if if your boss say, let's do a 30 day average, <laughs> then if you don't specify, it's hard, a bit tricky how to do that. So, okay, so there, um, we should, there, is it working? So we can, uh, what is called, that's called TB sub. Okay, okay. No, uh, I got an error. Mm -hmm. I got error. D -d 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 so I'm going to run everything uh, before and then run everything above <clears throat> and then run it. Just to make sure I have everything here. Okay, and then run this code again. Ah, now it works. So there's <laughs> the, the, the issue of this kind of a, a notebook is sometimes I run something, it's going to stay in the memory. And then you run the next code, it's not previous result still there. So then you have to refresh the whole thing. <laughs> uh, the funny thing is today, uh, I had a similar problem on the Google Cloud. <laughs> I, I was doing something on IRH cloud system. Uh, I set up uh, a Google Cloud. I run a Jupyter notebook. I run into an error. And I tried to debug for a while. I, I gave up, I, I sent a ticket to the IRH tech support and then they say they just email me back say can you just restart the notebook see whether the problem will go away i was like oh gee i should do that i restart and everything works <laughs> i was like <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> i should try that myself I instead of uh, email someone a uh, <laughs> hundred miles away <laughs> for, for that advice. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, besides, I was it, it's taking like a, a twenty cents uh, per hour. I just wasted twenty cents. <laughs> it's not that too much, but still, I'm using computing time on the Google Cloud. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> okay. 
that's also because I didn't parallelize my job. If you if I run in a really large job, that can be a very expensive. Okay, sorry. Uh, that's actually also says why we are using this. If you work for a hospital or something, someday you're going to use a cloud notebook, all those things. Yeah. You can, yeah, but you, but there are some subtle differences yeah. <laughs> between a Jupyter notebook and R studio. Uh, so uh, if you if you just copy paste this, it may or may not run most of them. Yeah, in, in most cases, but there are some subtle difference because Google Cloud. Uh, there is a library Not all library can run on Google Cloud. Yeah. So, and uh, Google Cloud is. Yeah, tell you what I'm saying. Then, like, yeah. it's included in the table, so I didn't have to uh, pick it up from somewhere else. I see. Yeah. Uh, there, there are many, I, I have run into many libraries that don't work on CoLab. Yeah. Yeah. But CoLab is convenient uh, for most of the work we do. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> apparently, it's also catching up. Uh, even RH, uh, well, the best. Uh, <laughs> place in this country also use Google Cloud. It's probably cheaper to save a lot of uh, IT people <laughs> on their side. So, uh, sorry, that's a bit. <clears throat> uh, okay, so now we, we actually, so by the way, all those are just chapter one. <laughs> we just, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, and nine lines of code. That's <laughs> chapter one. Uh, so once you know how to do it, it really doesn't take too much uh, to, to, to do some very complicated thing. So, okay, so <clears throat> now we can, we can, that's just subsetting. But then how do we convert from the cumulative cases to the daily cases? Uh, I'm going to let you study this line of code and 246 and also uh let's see yeah here and then explain that on the oh i see that's coming uh, okay the question is, um, how uh, how do I put the question somewhere? Uh, I'm going to put the question here. How do we convert cumulative? Cases into daily cases. That's my question. Uh, <clears throat> you can answer, put your answer there. So you need to study the code 248 and study line, two, line 248, 253. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> uh, no, you don't have to. I mean, uh, 
basically the idea behind it. Someone put the answer there. Okay. Yeah, we could use a mutate, um, but in this case, I use a specific function called DIFF. <clears throat> but why do I put the, why, why do I write this one this way? Uh, we add zero uh, because if you catch it, yeah. But because if you have two number, you have a one difference. Have three number, you have two difference. So your difference is always one uh, element shorter than your input array. So if you want to assign your difference back into array, you're going to you can give the errors indexing error because you cannot assign. If you use a Java or other strong language, it's going to give you a compiling error. In R or Python, it's the uh, interpreter. It just gave you a runtime error. Say, no, you cannot do that because the two array doesn't match. So, <laughs> yeah, so. Then by default, you just I just assign that one into the next day because the, the today's difference minus yesterday, that means today we have something, right? So yesterday is zero, today is that's the difference. So, so that's why uh, I put a zero at the beginning and then put it back into the into the data frame. Otherwise, the uh, <clears throat> dates and the, the uh, cases won't match. So. It's not much difference in the long run, but uh, it, it is definitely gonna give you a compiling error, a, a, a long time error if you don't do that. So, yeah. so there, uh, yeah, uh, first, first the number is zero, and then after that, it's daily cases. So. And <clears throat> also convert the dates back call that year, month, and the date, so. And then also put that in the row name. Uh, that's just to keep some sanity. Uh, so. And then we added the column name back, uh, if I run this. Oh. Now the, the thing about this, you have to run it one by one. If you jump one, it doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, I forgot uh, this one. Uh, next chunk. I need to make sure I run, run every chance. So just to, uh, otherwise I got that error. Uh, Okay, so and then this is basically a GG plot to plot the the daily cases was was this what uh, aesthetic horizontal is a year, month, and a date. Uh, vertical is the daily cases. So in this case, we uh, put the, the y-axis daily cases. And the exit uh, is that it's really just dates, yeah, it's time. 
Yes. Uh, geo smooth. Let's just control a parameter to control how how broad is your smoothing range. Now you can you can you, if you try that into a smaller one, you will see become uh, more noisy. Yeah, become more noisy. If you add uh, the uh, larger range, fine. And it's going to become more uh, flattened out because it take a bigger average. So, and unfortunately, in this case, the we had we are just doing that empirically. Uh, we look at point three in this plot, give a reasonable smoothing versus the actual dot plot. Uh, I guess maybe even smaller, two two point five. Yeah, maybe 2.5 seems to be even better. So it's kind of a, a visual, this is basically become a visualization. And how much uh, do you want to capture that those peaks and the valley, right? So, uh, <clears throat> uh, point two five is, I mean, this this one is really sharp. Uh, uh, that must be the Omicron. <laughs> Because so it's it's the yeah it's it's a so so uh the spark is so sharp it's hard to capture with the polynomial smoothing function uh I know so uh now that's basically uh is. The daily cases. Now, I have actually provide some extra challenge. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, how do I go back? Okay, how do we find out on uh, August 22nd to 23rd, 2021, how many COVID 19 cases at the Hamilton County, Tennessee? And we can add some incentive to this. The, uh, the first person got uh, this uh, got this correct. Uh, what kind of incentives we should we can use? Uh, <laughs> uh, you'll get the free uh, free coffee. How about that, I will buy you a free coffee. At the Starbucks. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this is 1838. How about I give you uh, how? Uh, how uh, oh, someone already got it. Uh, I don't think I want to know the number. I actually now those are correct. But, uh, yeah. so. Six hundred. I'm going to hide this. Uh, <clears throat> I guess that uh, free cup of coffee is not easy to get. <laughs> so, uh, Sorry, what? Yeah. Well, 
Well, you could download the entire data into Excel that look for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a joke. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> actually, let, we, we actually really can do that. So this is 2020, 2021. Oh, I passed that. Twenty 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 three. Two oh five and two one ten. To ten zero. Okay, this is actually uh, not what I thought it is. Mm. Uh, those are, are spiritually correct, but the practically wrong. <laughs> what should I say? Yeah, the one thing I let you go, yeah, I didn't realize. I was thinking that was already the month date. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't see that. I didn't realize that oh, there is no month 22 after you. <laughs> Oh, I see. Uh, I, see. Uh, I, see. I see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> like, like, like this. Th those are incorrect because those are strings. You cannot using the object to to compare a string. You need to convert those back into the object, a data object. So, <laughs> so, so. Uh, uh, let me let me try this myself. Uh, well, I just ask you to do something. I, I need to show by example, I guess. <laughs> uh, now, uh, let's see. Uh, where is that data? <clears throat> okay, so where's my question? Um, where did I put my... No, that's that cannot be correct. It's a daily case stuff. So. Okay, where where did I put my question? Oh, I see. Finally, it's here. So, <clears throat> oh, actually, uh, there it is. Uh, Oh, I need to do after this. This is called a name. Okay, I'm going to do this after this. Okay. <clears throat> so, found out daily cases on a per particular day. In this case, <clears throat> what's that word? Uh, TV daily. Uh, how do I call that date? Y and D, Y and D, Y and D. Uh, a two. Yay. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, so I basically, uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, you, you could use so called the between function, uh, between first day and the uh, last day. But you can't, in this case, I just use a lot uh, to get this. Uh, is it okay? Uh, apparently, last year, 
I found this is a zero, but somehow the the data is not revised. I'm pretty sure last year when we do this, they only provide a weekly average. So this is zero, but somehow this now become daily. And so it's, it's not zero anymore. But there are other zeros. Uh, look at the... Oh, I picked the wrong one. That's right. Okay. Look at the I was trying to see the weekly average. Uh, okay, this is not easy to look at. <clears throat> huh. uh, someone must sanitize that data. Oh no, he did not. So those are the interesting cases. Okay. But it does look like the uh, data quality has improved. Uh, last year when I did this, there are uh, so many zeros out there. Uh, apparently, the quality of the data is improved. So, so. <clears throat> okay, that means I the next question uh, is not valid anymore. La apparently, last year this is a zero, uh, but this year it's not zero. So. Uh, <clears throat> but still, if you do the plot. Uh, Uh, if we do the plot at the smaller scale, uh, in, so I'm going to redo this. Uh, one. Instead of uh, 900 days, I'm going to just do uh, 90 days or 30 days. No, four week average, uh, 30 days, okay, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> Okay, so this is the 30 day average. Wow, look, it's zero cases in the last couple of days. Uh, is that really the case? Why the virus has stopped spreading in the last few days? Uh, okay, I guess the, my question is now is this. Uh, the question is, uh, why did uh, the virus, uh, this, uh, why we see zero cases in Hamilton County in the last uh, seven days? That's the question. It's all zero, look, perfect. Why there's zero cases in the last uh, seven days? At the Hamilton County, Tennessee. Sorry, what? No, 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 no. There, 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 here. This is from uh, today, is September 7. We have data all the way to September 6. They are all there. From uh, August 29, then, then they are all there.
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, one year when I was teaching this, uh, apparently there is a one student actually work at the Hamilton County Health Department. <laughs> That's the person actually <laughs> had the first hand uh, <laughs> insight on those numbers. Uh, So let me see what people's answer. It's the Labor Day long weekend and nobody works. <laughs> so, uh, it's the same thing when you when you find those uh, valleys there. Yeah, there's probably a uh, weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, yeah. that's basically, the virus really don't have a weekend. It's a human have a weekend. <laughs> a human take the long weekend off. Doesn't mean the virus stop. Uh, yeah, so. so that's basically, it's, I mean, it is data there, we analyze them, but uh, we, we see, basically, if you look at the long period of the case, you look at the virus, have a, a nine to five weekly job. I mean, <laughs> we get five days, and then take two days off. <laughs> so, uh, but the, the, the truth is, well, people who collecting the samples work five days, take two days off. <laughs> so, uh, so basically there, that's the, yeah. <clears throat> so I guess that's probably one of the point I'm trying to make here. Uh, there's the data, you, you do data and I, people always say, Data driven or evidence driven, but the data is there. Is is that a reflecting <laughs> of the real thing? It's like a, uh, uh, there, there's actually there is a very ancient uh, uh, joke says some blind people trying to figure out how the elephant <laughs> looks like. <laughs> so yes, uh, someone touched the trunk, someone touched the tail. Yes, I mean, those are all real things, but the, not the reflecting of the <laughs> truth. Right, so, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that's probably the lesson I try to emphasize. Let me see what the extra challenge I have here. Yeah, found out that there are also weird location of the data. In this case, we can find out the, uh, oh, Found out that how, how uh, in this case, uh, found out that the weird location in the John Hopkins data set. There, there are many weird, so called uh, weird. Let's say the one year one asked people to look for a weird location. Uh, it actually, I got some very interesting answers. So I will see. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to open up the a question and see whether you you have some uh, interesting insight how do we find out some uh, weird location in the john hawkins uh, location data it's basically a combined key there <clears throat> look at the combined key see whether there are some uh, weird uh, places you don't have to look at combined you can also look at the cases also notice those uh, what, what I found out, people have different definition of being weird in this. <laughs> when, you, when you say found a weird, weird location, some people give you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, those are not, those are American territories. Yeah, cruise ships, those are weird, yeah. So there's actually even weirder place than cruise ships. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, those, those are, those are they, are, they are put at the same place as a state. 
uh, obviously not. <laughs> yeah. So, so <clears throat> you can see the yeah diamond princess. That's the grand princess. This should come. Uh, that's not a state yet. <laughs> so, uh, but it's uh northern actually there are even weirder places when you look at the county name so so like tennessee uh 97 county are they really are there 97 counties in tennessee Oh, I see. Uh, TN counties. Let me see. Look, there is a county name called unassigned. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's basically, apparently, this is. I saw this kind of thing only happen in <laughs> uh, authoritative regime places, but apparently this is the, apparently like why they put the cases on diamond princess as separate because no state claim that part of their cases. But why, but even in Tennessee, there are some people in Tennessee got COVID case no county say it belongs to them. <laughs> That's it. Even though those people located in Tennessee, apparently there are places that don't belong to any county in Tennessee. <laughs> uh, there are always this kind of weird things happen when you do this daily reporting. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And you can look for this under sign, this. Tennessee is not <clears throat> just for the for the good name of our Tennessee. This is not unique to Tennessee. <laughs> uh, almost every state has this category. Almost every state, there are people no county want to collect. Well, even last semester in the forty-two forty, they mm -hmm. had a response through COVID analysis on worldwide flu region uh -huh. and diamond princess was in a country i see even larger than what, what is that uh, class you are doing uh for the two that was, that was for the one that you asked the, the prerequisite oh I see, I see i see okay i see okay and i just thought it was interesting because you're the diamond princess is in, in the states i see and, and it's yeah, actually in the country country oh geez. uh I'm pretty sure Diamond Princess is registered in some country. <laughs> they just <laughs> refuse to uh, count that. <laughs> so, okay, that's the sorry, that's a funny part of it. So, so it, you can actually find out how many states have this unassigned as a county name. How do we find that one out? Uh, Those are the county names, right? So <clears throat> that's in admin two, by the way. Found out how many, basically, how not how many admin two has the unassigned. So if you, uh, yeah, that basically is admin two. If you if we just uh, use the spreadsheet to browse about it, oh gee, look look, I'm assigned Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Kansas, California, Colorado. Now that makes our people at Tennessee feel a little bit <laughs> a little better. <laughs> Every state had this problem. Yeah. Yeah. All the way to Wyoming. Uh, yeah, but 
this they are they the what 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 this means there are people got COVID in the state but no county say it is theirs so they had to put put into unassigned counties <laughs> so <laughs> I wonder where, where those people live. <laughs> so <laughs> live at the border of the country or something. <laughs> so, uh, <yeah>. so, uh, <clears throat> where do they go to school? I mean, they have to go to some school at the county. <laughs> so, sorry, that's a bit of uh, a joke there. So, yeah. so How do we find out the <clears throat> how many unassigned counties are there? Uh, anyone? Uh, so the question is, how do we find out how many unassigned counties in the data set? <clears throat> So let me put a question there. <clears throat> it's from the from the TN counties. It doesn't have from all the state. From all from the, the state. state. Yeah. The state. Uh, So basically, how many unassigned counties in all, uh, all, all of the states? So you could, I mean, this is not a, a lot. Uh, you could count it manually. <laughs> and in this case, <clears throat> your manual counting provide an independent uh, uh, verification of your coding result. If you count only uh, 40 something, but you found out that like 50 something, then well, then will be wrong. So, <clears throat> but if both methods uh, give the same result, then you just, I guess, tap on your shoulder and say, I did a good job. <laughs> so, so. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, people come out the uh, various ways to do this. <clears throat> uh, I, I, this is probably a syntax error there. <clears throat> Fifty two. Yeah. It's saying out of fifty two, but rows one to ten of fifty two. So I see. Yeah, actually this will do. You you, you need to count it. So <clears throat> actually let me see. That that will just filter the table the end yeah. of the rows. I guess if you run that, it will tell you that the table was 52 by 970. Yeah. So that's that's oh, that one? No. Uh, no. You need to close the double quotes down, Professor. And oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. It 
not Casper. The A and N in capitalized. No. Um, okay, let's do it uh, step by step. Okay, okay, even here that work. Okay, then I do have something. Mine is the admin to be capitalized. I see. Okay. Okay, now it's working. Okay. <clears throat> Can't work. Well, after you change your admin to capital, hmm. I ran it without doing so. 52. Okay. So, I guess the. I, I ran it without select, just doing. Uh, oh, it's also. Account. It's just come number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. <clears throat> so, there are only 50 states. <laughs> so, I guess there are some territory. Uh, the other two are just. I see. Okay. All fifty states plus District of Columbia, Puerto Rico. I see. Uh, Puerto Rico conquers the border territory. Sure. I see. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so that must be it. Because whoever took the that, they just accidentally left the state going and went to another side. They left the county going to another side. Could be. Yeah. It could be someone just lazy. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, Besides, he's going to please all the county mayor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> okay, I think uh, it's good uh, to wrap up for today. Uh, so, let me see. Uh, so, what, what uh, chapter two? Wait, chapter two. Okay. So, we are. Uh, Loaded data frame, did the word DIFF. That's actually a Unix function, uh, diff function. Uh, but apparently, R borrowed it. Uh, I think Python pandas also borrowed it. <laughs> so it's, it's actually borrowed, uh, used everywhere. Uh, and then we check convert the cumulative into uh, daily cases, basically differences. And the other two lessons is. Our, we also did a simple plot, uh, but probably one of the, the, the most important uh, thing uh, you want to remember is always verify the, the data with some independent message. Um, and also need to recognize we have data, but what it really means, uh, I mean, people say seeing is believing, but <laughs> in this case, it's, you need to question what you are seeing is maybe just surface side underneath there something else. Yeah, so. But that's say, how do you know? <laughs> uh, right, yeah. So let's, let's say that that's beyond data science. That's become <laughs> what the philosophy or even politics sometimes. Yeah. So, okay, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done for today. Uh, Okay, let me make sure uh, <clears throat> I got everything I want to do. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> we review chapter one, cover the chapter two. And next time we are going to do Google mobility overlay. And so basically next week, uh, we are going to do mobility weather and and that's actually covers a lot. If, if uh, even though I went very quick, uh, about one hour to go over chapter. Every chapter I probably spent a few days to actually get data work when I actually first wrote this. So <clears throat> especially for the mobility and about the text. You you talked about the midterm. One of the previous classes, you said you would open it a little earlier than the previous semester. What what weeks? What weeks are we talking about? What, uh, when is the middle term this year? I don't know. That's why I was asking you. <laughs> well, you should okay. know. <laughs> uh, well, let's Google how about this. So. Stop sharing. I'm going to stop recording.